The video game industry, from a financial perspective anyway, is only going from strength to strength. It's difficult to remember that before Microsoft and Sony unveiled their latest consoles in 2013, many pundits were hypothesizing that we could have been heading for another video game crash. That hasn't happened, but it doesn't mean the desire for more sales has become any less cutthroat. There are more games coming out than ever before, and while that means more devs get a shot at success, it also means way more end up in ruin. The worst thing as well is what constitutes a financial disaster these days is rather puzzling. A big title might appear to make a ridiculous amount of money on the surface, but still be a total disappointment for the people who made it, resulting in the franchise being put on ice, or worse, the studios themselves going under. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 biggest video game financial disasters this generation. Number 10, Hitman 1 and 2. The Hitman franchise just can't catch a break. Despite releasing two of the best stealth games of the entire generation so far, sales figures for both have been incredibly disappointing, for reasons that seem entirely out of the developer's control. The first game had its strange episodic format to fall back on, but Hitman 2 had no real one issue to blame. After splitting with original publisher Square Enix and moving to WB, the messaging for the sequel was all over the place. Hell, a lot of people, myself included at first, didn't even know Hitman 2 was going to release as a full game, as opposed to episodic installments. And it's my job to literally know that. Consequently, launch numbers were down over 90% on the last physical release, Absolution, selling only around 200,000 copies across its first few weeks. Throw in a ridiculously crowded November launch date, which put it in direct competition with Fallout 76, Spyro Reignited, Pokemon Let's Go, as well as the residual power of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and it's easy to see how the sequel was suffocated. Number 9, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. In the run-up to release, it was difficult to find any information on The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Beanox's original game at least had a little bit of buzz surrounding it, with the developers enthusiastically showing off the new swinging mechanics and how they were expanding on the story of the movie counterpart. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, though, seemed to receive no promotion whatsoever, dropping with zero fanfare and without even the basic reviews at launch to let players like me know if it was any good. No, I'm not still bitter. Of course, it wasn't any good, and this title, even more so than most licensed games, felt phoned in and incredibly sloppy. Despite coming out on next generation consoles, it somehow looked worse than its predecessor, and the whole thing stunk of contractual obligations rather than anything relating to passion. As a result, the title sold poorly across its launch window, and to this day, has only sold about 750,000 copies. Number 8, Battlefield 5. While Battlefield 5 sales are in the millions, you need to remember that video game success and failure is all relative. And when it comes to the big publishers like EA, even something which sells seemingly well can be viewed as a massive financial failure. Battlefield 5 is a victim of this mentality, viewed as a letdown for the publisher only selling 7.3 million copies. 7.3 million. It sounds ridiculous that a game with those numbers could ever disappoint, but in the context of the franchise as a whole, it's easy to see why. Despite being a sequel, Battlefield 5 sold only half of its predecessor's take, and launched even behind maligned spin-off Hardline when it came to physical sales. Perhaps to make it more appealing, EA quickly slashed the title's price and put it on sale, which no doubt helped boost its numbers a little bit. But it didn't help enough, and the game was cited as one of the major reasons EA underperformed in 2018. Number 7. Overkill's The Walking Dead Overkill's The Walking Dead has been shambling along since 2014, suffering through one delay after another without any real fanfare. Despite most video game adaptations of Robert Kirkman's comic that aren't made by Telltale anyway being piss poor, Overkill continued to stress how they wanted to deliver a genuinely great co-op shooter that did the source material justice. Sadly, all signs pointed to that not happening. Even without the litany of delays, Overkill's The Walking Dead was poorly marketed, with its PC release date sneaking up on just about everyone. 
Unsurprisingly, without any real push, the game launched to sales that were below expectations, with the developer's other game, Payday 2, having a higher play count at launch despite being five years old at that point. At the end of 2018, publisher Starbreeze announced poor earnings and began procedures to cut costs in the future. Then, in January 2019, the console versions of the game were scrapped unceremoniously. By the end of February, Skybound, the owner of the Walking Dead license, announced they were terminating the contract with Starbreeze and development on the game would be discontinued. Number 6. Battleborn Battleborn was supposed to be Gearbox's next big blockbuster. Putting the Borderlands franchise on the back burner to turn to a brand new IP, the project was going head to head with Overwatch, which was launching more or less at the same time, with both titles delivering similar hero shooter goodness. Unfortunately, the problem was right there. And despite the developers insisting that Battleborn was completely different from Blizzard's world conquering phenomenon, it didn't really convince players who were already enamored with Overwatch's beta. Still, the sales for the game were initially strong, apparently similar to the launch week success of the original Borderlands, but unfortunately, it was all downhill from there. Players quickly dropped off once Blizzard Shooter shipped a few weeks later, and publisher Tick 2 commented that sales were below expectations at the end of the year. A year after it launched, the off-peak number of concurrent players on PC regularly dropped below 100, leading to rumors that the title could go free to play. Despite the devs repeatedly ruling this out, that's exactly what happened, but it didn't boost popularity and active support ended a year after. Number 5. Destiny 2 Throw this in with Battlefield 5 as a game which made a ridiculous amount of money at launch, but is still viewed as a total financial disaster by those who made it. Destiny 2 initially made all the right moves. It was clear that Bungie had listened to the complaints players had about the first title, releasing a sequel that amended those past mistakes, introduced a robust story, and gave players more content to tackle. Unfortunately, its monetization issues were absolutely not solved, and the way Activision continued to nickel and dime customers eventually turned many of them off. Despite enjoying strong launch sales then, retention was far less than the original game, and the player count dwindled even as solid expansion packs were regularly released. Then came the news that the publisher was disappointed with the title sales, sales which made it the second best selling game of 2017 may I add, yep the video game industry is just completely mad, and a few months later Activision and Bungie had split, with the latter keeping the IP. Number 4, Fallout 76. On paper, Fallout 76's 2.4 million copies sold doesn't seem that bad, but in comparison to the other games in the series and the titles it was directly competing against, it indicates a project that wholly underperformed. The last game in the franchise, Fallout 4, sold an astonishing 15 million copies, while the lowest performing release under Bethesda's oversight has been New Vegas, a game which overcame its bugs to still sell well over 8 million units. Of course, a lot of this disappointment had to do with the game's disastrous launch. Mediocre reviews hounded the title, while the myriad of bugs and glitches it launched with made it virtually unplayable for a lot of fans. Consequently, many were skeptical of early adopting, even with a quick price cut by Bethesda. Many pointed to the lower sales as being down to the shift in subgenre, with 76 being a live service multiplayer shooter rather than a straightforward RPG, but that should have actually benefited the game. These kind of experiences are incredibly popular at the moment, and that wave of excitement was something Bethesda was clearly trying to capitalize on. Number 3. Lawbreakers and Radical Heights Boss Key Studios was a victim of its own hype. The studio's first game, Lawbreakers, was actually pretty good, with cool designs, fast, punchy gameplay, and compelling heroes to fight with, but as with Battleborn, a little game called Overwatch stole everyone's attention. Unlike Battleborn, however, Lawbreakers couldn't avoid comparisons to Blizzard's game because it launched prior to it hitting shelves. Instead, Boss Key Shooter shipped one year afterward, meaning that everyone was already entrenched in Overwatch's community to jump ship to a new, unproven title. Consequently, despite the developers explaining that Lawbreakers was different to the competition and actually far better, it sold terribly and the servers were shut off in 2018. Just like all of my ex-girlfriends, the studio quickly moved on, this time chasing a trend far more blatantly with Radical Heights, a battle royale title released extreme early access in order to capitalize on that subgenre's booming audience. Most players saw it as nothing but a cash grab though, and while it did have some great ideas, its extremely unfinished state meant it didn't win over players who already had more robust experiences to dive into. 
After these two flops, Boss Key as a whole tragically shut down. Number 2. Metal Gear Survive Metal Gear Survive was never going to be successful. Why Konami push forward with the franchise so soon after their public falling out with series creator Hideo Kojima is baffling, as is transforming the series into a zombie survival game. But it was kind of a case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Had the developers created a proper sequel, fans would have revolted for doing it without the original team, while a spin-off would avoid this but equally receive ire for being pointless and losing the franchise's identity. Either way, only the hardcore of the hardcore fans picked up the game out of curiosity and realized it was essentially just a husk for Konami to shift microtransactions. The game only sold 100,000 copies in its first week on sale and to this day has an estimated lifetime total of less than 500,000. Hell, it flopped so hard Konami didn't even bother mentioning it during the following earnings report. Number 1. Crackdown 3 Crackdown 3 might be Microsoft's biggest failure of the whole generation. The long-awaited sequel was once intended as a flagship for the Xbox One X, said to make the most of the console's added performance and an example of what cloud technology could do to transform video games. Sadly, that release date came and went, and after a whole bunch of other delays, the title was virtually stealth-released in Feb 2019. Perhaps because they knew the sequel was a disappointment, Microsoft kind of left it to die in a window that saw it competing against the likes of Anthem, Metro Exodus, Far Cry New Dawn, Resident Evil 2, and Kingdom Hearts 3. Consequently, it debuted at a measly number 13 in the UK charts, selling just 10% of what Crackdown 2 did nine years prior. Of course, the sales data released so far doesn't include digital sales and, most importantly, how the game performed on Microsoft's Games Pass. The latter platform is particularly important, as Microsoft could have been using the exclusive as a way to push subscriptions. Still, we don't know for sure, and with the data we do have, it seems clear that Crackdown 3's sales have been a total write-off. So that's our list. I don't know you guys think down in the comments below. And let me reiterate, just because these games didn't sell as well as they could have, it doesn't mean they're all bad. But either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.